everybody, and welcome back to the Shadow War. Last time, uh, they made a call to shit themselves. Let's see if anyone survives. <laughs> Is something wrong with me? All right. I'm lower, I'm lower density, now, so my prof. voice just sounds like this. Before I drop this, I should say, uh, a friendly bardic person just dropped inspiration and then largely Leo staying for one minute. The clock starts now. I ain't big, Leo. Uh, thank you, thank you kindly, my dear fellow. How, for how long does this last? About a minute. Let's go kick some ass. Oh, okay. Well, I think that's enough darling. Let's get in there, everyone. <laughs> Behind me. Chop, chop. Don't do anything stupid, Sir Leo Sane. Are we really rushing into our death? Nah, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Lewis is just walking. Hi, it's like Leo Sane plants his hand firmly on the door, uh, looking over his shoulder, uh, waiting for everyone to catch up. As you guys enter this room, you guys are hit with a wave of ice cold air. It is darker here than anywhere else in this structure you've been. A green fog swirls around your feet on the floor. And you can hear hissing and slithering from the walls as you walk into this chamber. <laughs> we don't see anything? On oh. snake. Yeah, no, that, that thing really strikes you immediately. Damned uh, cursed beast! Why don't you show yourself? Strike now so that we can expunge you from this realm! Pulls back the bow and, uh, fuck it. You fire your arrow. And see if there's anything out there. And it comes to about middle of the room and skitters across the floor and you hear the skittering from the walls and the strange noises seem to stop for a moment as you hear a voice to what do I owe the pleasure of this visit to my tomb ain't tombs supposed to be for dead people sound pretty lively over there snaky the statue begin to writhe. The, hey, Leo Stane, sick him. The, the picatina and corrosion around the brass begin to give way, revealing snow white bone. Ooh, that's cool. The only thing that you owe us is your undoing, foul creature. Oh, <laughs> that's ye. Leo Stane's going to immediately charge. Could you please make a wisdom saving throw? Sure thing. I, I imagine it's probably a fear effect, so I'm going to use my inspiration. You begin to charge forward. You feel your body start to stiffen, but you break free of it as uh, it fails its whole person on you. Oh my god, okay. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, it's a caster, okay. Are all your kinds so rude when entering another's abode? Let's fucking smash this thing. You must abide by the laws of our land. We don't have to care about yours. I like chit-chat, but uh, you're gonna have to take up your qualms with that guy. Points at Leo. <laughs> We're kind of a little bit on a time crunch. Yeah, you could say so. So, like, we really don't care about your pleasantries. I think you look really cool. <laughs> don't compliment the snake. But, but he does. <laughs> look at him. Uh, this tube does not belong to you, and it never has. <laughs> Neither you or your sick deeds. Uh, he's going to continue the charge uh, after breaking out the old person. Okay. Follow. By all means. Add yourself to the tutorial. With pleasure. This looks fun. The snake is going to use its lair action. It lists out a piercing shriek. I'd like everyone to make wisdom saving throws, please. Here we go again. All right, all right. All of you who failed the, you know, your save is going to take nine points of necrotic damage. Ah, lovely. And right. a roll around you, the tombs begin to shift as several undead make their presence known. What do you call this? Oh, hey, buddy. Dead, your first act. Hey, hold on. Did that guy stand up? Yes, he did. <laughs> Opportunity to attack. Okay, Fucking sure. Fucking practic <laughs> moment! <laughs> That's the dumbest shit. Uh, yeah, sure. No, heck, go ahead. You guys haven't taken turns in combat, correct? No. Yeah, it's, it's a very start, yeah. All right, he's going to look to Leosay and be like, I'll clear the way for you. You clear the ads. I'll focus, boss. The other one. So I'm going to bonus action disengage, rush yeah. over here, and I'm going to try and assassinate this one before it can get up. Okay. Uh, with my greatsword. All right, yeah. So uh, that is a crit because assassinate. Okay. <laughs> 11 slashing. 
Plus, I'm gonna do sneak attack. Personally, I like to make my life easy and just uh, I double total damage. Honestly. You double total damage, double <laughs> right? Total so damage. that's a 42 damage crit. Ooh. If you really want to do that, I do. I do. Okay, 42 damage. Oh, Jed, this thing as it begins to raise its head out of uh, the uh, crypt, you fucking swing for the rafters and take this thing's head completely off. Awesome. Uh, and then with the last 10 feet of movement, he's going to hop over to the other side of the coffin, and he's going to slam his foot down on this one, so if that one is in here, it cannot rise up. That is his turn. All right, good to know. Lewis, you're next. Back him. Leo saying. So, main action sprint to enter engagement range with the uh, this bone snake. Yeah. Um. As you get closer, could you make a perception check for me, please? As you get closer, you see faintly carved into the bone of this creature just... Arcane sigils and runes that pulse with a sickly green power. Mm. Your treatment of the dead in this place suggests nothing of manners. And that's my compelled duel. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. Who am I to deny meals that come to me so easily? You take issue with our intrusion, we settle it here and now. It knows what you're doing, it's going to willingly fail. Oh, okay! <laughs> It raises face about level with you. It opens its maw wide. As a magic sigil appears in its mouth, I would like you to make a dexterity throw as it breathes shards of bone in your direction. This thing has a breath weapon. Oh, I'm about to go full on wrestling bone with breath. this bitch. Uh, Leo Sane, you're going to take 15 points of piercing damage. Gotcha. You just catch it while you, it just perforates your armor. Uh. Brutalize this undead quite a bit. Hello there. Uh, Karan, like, you know, still has another song in one hand, uh, quickly draws out the scimitar that's holding Martel at the moment, and slickety slack, uh, pulls out the blade and then just flicks and just goes, uh, I know that you use a staff and everything, but, uh, Jared, use him for a bit. He might help you a little. Uh, and he's gonna toss Seraphim Martel's scimitar. All right. My echo's gonna move down to the side. I'm going to flank this one with Lewis. Yeah, Lewis, you're just kind of watching this thing, and all of a sudden it stops as blood splatters your face as a blade penetrates from behind, and it keels over. You just see a smiling Aster behind it. Blank face. Thumbs up. Thumbs up back. <laughs> I would like to rage. <laughs> all right. Take this fucker's head clean off. Reckless. Let's go. It is still alive, but just barely. And which brings us back to the top of the round. And as such, I need everyone once again to make a wisdom saving throw. Mm. You got it, Chief. Uh, the DC would be 12. Seven points in the product damage. More undead begin to rise from their coffins. My foot down on this so it doesn't come up. You hear the, you hear the thing rattling. Like, Eh, not today, buddy. Keep sleeping another 10,000 years. Karan, this one's going to leap out of- This one is, is kind of missing its body from the waist down. You think in its previous life it might have been bisected? It launches itself out of the uh, coffin and tries to grab onto you as it makes its attack. He steps up on top of this coffin, uh, pulls out the fucking pistol from earlier, and is going to take off a shot at the snake. He is going to hop down off of this, and I'm going to hide as a bonus action back here. Go ahead and make yourself check. Mm -hmm. Crit. Oh shit, never mind. <laughs> Very I nice. I lost track of Jed. <laughs> Jed gone. <laughs> oh, yeah, everybody, you hear a shot ring out? You don't know where the fuck he came from. You can't see Jed anywhere. <laughs> Was that you, Karan? Impeccable aim! <laughs> hey, Karan, you good? Or you want you want some help? Uh, do whatever you think is better. Yeah, they look like they're handling that. Almost oh, certainly hit! He's gonna position himself here. Basically, I want to maneuver in such a way that there's still the uh, the reach, so that I can get him with my enlarged weapon. As you as you cleave into the bone, Cerberactic, I require your assistance. I'm a bit busy here. I can't have these little guys nibbling at my calves. Before I end turn, bonus action, I'm going to use one of my two healing files. It is going to turn his head back towards you. Could you please make a wisdom saving throw? You can have a disadvantage on all ability checks and saving throws made with strength. It's going to curse your strength. Oh, okay. So for as long as I'm enlarged, and I'll just have normal. And then it is going to circle around the zombie and come up to, on your side. You you bring your weapon down, but it moves way too quick. And it slams it to the into the uh, tile floor. Yeah, just barely missed it. Your snow will be delicious. I feel the power emanating from you, and I want it. I will have it! 
Uh, talking mighty tall shit for someone who just moved right into flanking position. A server <laughs> ended over there. <laughs> you have any idea how long this guy's halberd is? <laughs> they no longer hit. As you as you just swack punch punch, you feel you feel the bones start to just cave underneath your barrage. Hello. Hi. Oh, that will definitely hit. It's and that one. Good. On a positive note, that means I can beat the shit out of it now too. That's a oh. crit. <laughs> Uh, 29 damage. Okay. <laughs> and then for my bonus action, I'm going to hit the one Aster just got with my uh, offhand for nine. <laughs> it staggers to the side, you say. Mm -hmm. I cut it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nine more slashing. Come on. I thought you said you were oppressive. So far, you're just a big, dumb snake. I'm gonna jump out, and while he's distracted with Veractic Seraphim and Leo's thing, I'm gonna swing down and try and crack his fucking skull open! Just separating bo uh, ribs from the spine as you enter phase two. Buddy, I have a second swing. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> I ain't Zero done. Towards you. Go ahead. <laughs> oh my god, rogue damage. You have two phases? Yeah, well, our gen has two attacks. As it's four, as you slash into it, just sinking into it, ribs get to split and fall to the ground. It locks eyes with you. Enough games. And you watch these ribs on the ground begin to writhe and twist and come in together into piles. And you hear hissing from them as these bones take on the appearances of bone white snakes. Bone snakes. Ha ha, bone snakes. Hopefully, hopefully they don't, don't get a turn before I do, haha. Ha. I'm gonna bonus action toss you a great, a, a normal, like, healing potion, 2d6 plus 4 one. Oh my fucking god. Alright, I'm wrestling. I'm wrestling. It's decided. Hey, that's me. I'm gonna hit a zombie. Alright. Leo's thing, catching the greater healing flask in one hand, is gonna just pop it open with his, like, enlarged thumb. <laughs> just... Uh, that's more like it. Leo's thing's gonna just, uh, crack his knuckles. It's gonna go in. It's gonna go in for the grapple. I'd like to try to hold its jaw closed. Okay. Kind of like, kind of like I'm going in and I'm I'm wrestling like a like a like an alligator. Uh, yeah. Its jaw opens wide. It, be, it goes to bite at you, but you grab it by below the jaw on the top of the head. You push that fucker together. It is grappled. Everyone, strike now! Well, I've got its flank exposed. <laughs> it it just kind of rises and just kind of struggles in your grip, but you hold on. Those and hold who on. rest here deserve their rest. You hear? You feel the might of Carbonia moving through your veins as you crush this thing together and keep it in place. They have served their purpose, so let them be. <laughs> Leo, saying you feel swar these swarms of snakes begin to coil around your legs, and they will attempt to bite you. Come at me. Eight, Twenty-two to hit you. Hits. Six points of piercing damage. Oh. And could you please make a constitution saving throw? Sure thing. Oh, okay. no. These snakes coil around your legs. You feel their fangs penetrate. And your vision goes blurry as you fall to the side as you take 14 points of poison damage. And, yeah, he just goes down like a, like a ton of steel. Uh, the other swarm, I did say, was also going for you, so you will take one death fail from them attacking you. Noted. Jed. Snakes are coming for you. It's gonna be a 14 to hit you. That's not it. Uh, the spirit spear to either one on either side of Jed. So you see the snakes begin to writhe and hiss. Aster. Uh, I'm sure going down. Come on, big guy, you and me. There, someone help Aster. I <laughs> My barbarian in Christ, help me. Come on. This thing is starting to quiver. Deep cracks in the bone. It is looking very ill. These zombies begin to writhe over the form of Leo Sane. Yep, there it is. And it is at that moment, Karan, a quickening emanates from you without you pushing for it. You watch Karan as Leo Sane's soul begins to leave his body. You see it fragment and twist around you. But you also find that while everything else has stopped moving, you are able to move. You hear Martel's voice. Don't let them go. Yeah, it would be a stupid move, but yeah. I would just try to move here and then try to shove it back in so you, you know. You see, as you reach out to these fragments of Leo Stain's soul, 
you see different aspects of his childhood, his first blade, his indoctrination into the Knights of Carbonia, and you see the spirit of a dragon swirling in between them. And as you begin to gather, your eyes start to glow bright white, and you're no longer on this planet. You are among the stars. The stars begin to swirl around you as you dip into the astral plane. You begin to grab each of these bits of essence. Could you please make sterity check with your proficiency? You take a bit of starlight and you swirl it around those in soul and you breathe into it as if you would breathe life into anyone else. And you begin to feel it pulse in your hand and thrum with that life energy as you begin to press it into Leo Stain's chest. Leo Stain, in your dying moments, you feel like this is the end, that you've died a warrior's death, but then air fills your lungs again <gasps> as you begin to breathe again. Leo Stain, you are alive. Jed. You see Charon quickly move over to Leo Stain's side, and you see Leo Stain begin to breathe as the zombies kind of fall off of him. <gasps> and you see this, and you see this bone naga in front of you, and you see it, it's weakened, it is crumbling, it is barely alive. What does Jed do? Assassino. Well, I mean, <laughs> they say he does best. <laughs> Steal the killing blow on the boss. <laughs> <Wait>. <laughs> I'm gonna snap my sword down into the snake. <laughs> this casket, you look to see in the eye, and you just charge forward and drive your blade straight into its skull. It digs in deep, and you twist, and its skull splits in two as it falls to either side. All around you, all the undead underneath its control begin to wither and turn to ash as they begin to hit the ground. And with that, we are out of initiative, and all of you are victorious. The statue at the end of the room crumbles, revealing a small pit with a staircase going down. Third boss? That was just the mid-boss baby. <laughs> mid-boss baby! <laughs> Let's go round three! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that uh, includes these bone snakes at my feet? Yeah, the, the, the source of their life energy is gone. Yeah, I'm gonna kick them off of me. I'm gonna kick them the fuck off of me. <laughs> you you see ribs scatter across the floor. They turn back to fragments of bone. Yeah, I, I imagine like Leo's thing just like is brushing them off as he's like lying there on his back. He's been like crushed into the sarcophagus itself by like all the zombies and things on top of him. Leo, Stan, you feel you see you see the poison pour from your wounds and turn to dust. By Carbonia's might, I guess it wasn't my time yet. Jed just kind of side eyes Caron. I'm sure if I um. No small parts, your own doing, Karan. What did you do there? He uh, is just kind of looking at his hands, kind of deep in thought, and just like, mm, not fully sure. It's something weird. Something weird. <clears throat> I'm gonna run Oof. up. Something within you that you just can't explain. Uh, Leo's thing is going to. Kneel before Karan. <laughs> like, oversized hand on his shoulder, and just gonna, like, pat him on the back. Just. <laughs> Can you feel it, Karan? Yeah, as the, as the enlarge and reduce ends, and he just, like, is just still there. Can you feel that burning within that heart of yours? Such purpose it must be, I imagine. Nothing more than what I felt before, which was uh, the Queen's mission, which I guess maybe that's why I was... Maybe that's why I could do that. Almost seems like the Queen gave you a little bit of her own respect, if you will. I'm sure you guys have seen me moving Le There's, Lewis around. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Lewis is stabbing all of the zombies' heads in the rest Lloyd. of the tombs, just to be... just in case. <laughs> Quickly going to just, you know, go around everyone, just be like, hey, you do it, are you doing? Uh, God, just uh you time. might want one of these, and I'm gonna hand Leo Stone one of my healing pots. <laughs> ah, yes, I'm very much appreciated, Silver Actic. That nearly dying does smart quite a bit. And, uh, I think channel divinity to restore a spell slot and immediately cure wound self. <laughs> yeah, that I'm makes gonna sense. I'm gonna hold a handout to Leo Stone. 
Servo Dark, well, yes, I'm, I'm in pain. I, I do insist that whatever it is that Karan did to save my life, I am, uh, I am still, I am still in one piece. That's good. At least all of you's here to receive my congratulations for your incredible display of courage today. Go on, take it. Servo Dark, do you really mean it? Would I be saying it if I didn't? To, to earn the respect of one of the Knights of the uh, Stormhaven like this, I, I am most humbly honored. My good sir, you fought well as well. You fought well, likewise. <laughs> and <laughs> clasp, firm handshake. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell, Hell yeah. yeah. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Brilliant fighting, Leo Stein. Yes. Well, there's no doubt about it. This pairing between you, I, all of us, it was meant to be. Uh, so are we going deep or not? We need we need to go make sure that those who will be rescued from the from the dungeon down here, the subterranean dungeon, we need to go make sure that they're all okay. The staircase? S- staircase. Staircase? What? Is it where case? Look right there! She points. Oh, their case. <laughs> I love the estate so much. <sighs> Judging by the fact that all the undead killed over, it couldn't be as bad as the. Eh, maybe there's the loot. Fuck it. <laughs> I feel if that if, if this place truly holds any more answers as to what went on, then at the bottom of the stairs, I feel like we may find some answers. Look at all that gold. Lewis looks over. Damn, that's more than I make in, like, a week. That's more than I've ever made! I don't see this unless you're raiding the whole fucking pay caravan. Nice. It would constitute as our as our dues for our work here today. Mm. Oh, unless, chances. of course, it's... C- 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 cursed gold! That's something to consider. Wait, wait, everyone, hide behind the pillar. I'm gonna go walk up and touch it. Yes, then. Maybe let someone who's not broken every bone in their body do that. I feel right as rain, Sir Valdoc, with no offense. Untaken. Use your trap checking skills that you've been working on. Uh, the ones that Aaron taught me about? It, look, just at level with you. Uh, it didn't go too well when I tried it. Third time's the charm, right? Maybe. Let me just get my character sheet back open. Your what? Don't worry. I got this. <laughs> that perception, though, you do notice the statue behind you, there is something on it. There seem to be joints along the arms and such where you could obviously just orient it or dress it or whatever. And there is a silvery, light, thin uh, shirt made out of different rings. And you've been on the battle before. This is... This thing's covered in mithril chainmail. Well, let's just look in the chests. At first, you're kind of running through, and it seems a bunch of scrolls detailing, like, bodies coming in and such. But then you find a little switch. This thing has a false bottom. And you pull it open, and you find a bag and a little box. What's in the box? You open it, and there is a very pretty ring inside of it. Hmm. Anything descriptive about the ring or the box? He, there is a lar- like a square kind of inset gem in the very top of of the ring that looks like that kind of reminds you of the night sky. Hmm. Yeah, it's got like a silvery kind of ring. Strange. And, and could you make an uh, arcana check for Aster really quick? Yeah, you recognize that bag. You've heard of other travelers using them. Yeah. That's a bag of holding. Nice. It begins. I, I just kind of like. Slid it open and, like, look in. You turned it inside out, snakes. Snakes! <laughs> <laughs> no! Snakes immediately swarm Leo's thing, killing them again. <laughs> <laughs> no, I chose! Distraction <laughs> back from another universe. Comes down the stairs, sees snakes murdering Leo's thing. It's a, t- it's a time travel back. bag. It pulls the snakes <laughs> in from the past and, like, bite the shit out of you. Wait, what the fuck? There's a crab chilling at the bottom of this bag. Hey, yo? Yo, crab. It just yeah, guys. Like you Who are you, yeah, guys. That was my backup character in case Leo's thing died. She looks like in deeper, and just like, are you? How can you breathe down there? I'm gonna just like head first, just like tumble into the bag. 
Oh no. You go and come in and you just you tumble a good distance. Like it's look around, it's it's very dark, but you just see like a little bit of water at the bottom of the bag. And you see a skeletal figure covered in broken and torn up leather armor. Uh-huh. Uh you can all, you can assume that maybe he tried to hide down here or something. Sorry, buddy. You you get a closer look at the crap and it it's not organic. It seems to be made of of little pieces of brass and such, oh. like different gears and gizmos. As this as the little clockwork crab comes up, it just starts. I'm going to take out of my pack the clockwork fish in a ball that I got from Gobbo, and I'm going to place it on the ground for the crab to have a friend. It comes over, kind of pokes at it. Two claws come out, pick it up, puts it on its head. It looks very pleased. Aster smiles <laughs> wide. At this point, Varactic is going to reach into the bag and pull Aster out. Ooh, okay, my friend! <laughs> Pulls you out with all 30 feet of reach. Varactic does not know this, <laughs> but Mike does that there's only 30 minutes of air inside of a bag of holding. Oh, kid, did you just fall into another dimension? Yeah, but there's a crab down there. Huh. Neat. I, I dropped know. Aster back on the floor. <laughs> Thank you, by the way. I was kind of wondering how I was going to crawl out, but yeah, seems like his old master died down there. There's a corpse. Um, we have a friend in a bag. She holds up the bag. <laughs> well, good for you. Oh, curious. I wonder if it's, oh, I wonder if anyone in town would know who this crap belongs to. You should name it. That reminds me. Once we, once we look through to see what exactly is being kept down here, I suggest that we take this all back to the to the local resistance leader to see if there's any missing items from the town down here. There's a bunch of like embalming reports. I wonder if any of these say like who was brought down here and turned into zombies. Let me see what I've got what you've got there, kiddo. I was thinking we can probably bring these back up to the resistance and maybe they can tell people who you know, if people lost their family members, kinda like to Lewis, they could tell them, like, you know, closure and that sort of thing. Oh, yes, I feel like that would be the right course of action to take here. We could start maybe, with the crowd. Maybe the guy who was in the bag was the mortician, perhaps. Hmm. If somebody was down here hiding in a bag of holding, could they. Maybe they knew something? Maybe the crab knows something. Karan, Karan, are you still up there? Maybe there's souls in the bag! Ooh! Garon, right, my good fellow, we require your assistance immediately. <laughs> if you have the time. Head down like you put. Mm -hmm. There's a corpse in this bag of holding. If I'm a dead person, it might know something if you can get in contact, so to speak. What's that bag of holding? Yeah, there's a corpse in it. No, but, but. What? What? Oh, it's, how? it's a. It's a bag that, like. Big room inside of bag, magic bag. That makes no sense. It can hold many things. I, why are and you? Goods. What do you mean it makes no sense? Lewis. You are literally using magical spears. You make Lewis. no sense. Lewis, <laughs> tell him about the bag of holding. What? How would you put a room inside of a bag? Explain this. Explain the car on no, what the bag not, holding not, is. No, not at all. I, I just, why would you put a room inside of a bag? That just makes no sense to me. Are you daft? No. You ever have trouble carrying things in your life, ever? He, D L Lewis pull, holds up a finger and says, uh, wait, it's a language thing. Um, it's just a bigger bag inside of a bag, a smaller bag. Oh, why didn't they just say so? Yeah, there it's you go. literally what they said. My God. <laughs> he was interpreting it as a room. He motions around to the That's room. That's what it is. <laughs> It's There's no difference. Weird. There's no difference to us because it's colloquialisms. Anyway. You know what doesn't make sense to me? No, your fucking language. Mm. What language? Slides down. Uh, pens. Sometimes they speak... I uh, uh, don't know what that one is, but it sounds like guttural. There's that one that sounds like... Uh, Rocks no, your sand. fucking native language. Oh, um, he just starts rattling his teeth. Bones. You speak bones, kid. 
everyone can speak bones. I have officially lost this conversation and I'm going to go keep looting. Make sure you're checking the checking the trunks for false bottom server actic. I open the chest. <laughs> you find what looks to be a pair of goggles in this chest. It's got like a leaf pattern to the area around it, and there's like uh, bits of brass and strap made out of leather with uh, iron rings. Considering this is down here, I'm betting this is probably magical. Could just be basic boring bullshit. You find what looks to be some kind of dagger with a, with a blade that has a definite curve to it. And there's a green gem set in right above the uh, the grip. And Curvy McCurve Dagger. We're in a snake's tomb. What do you think it does, Veractic? I flip it around on my hand. Flip it back. Oh, it's a fucking snake fang. Uh. Yeah, yeah, you got it. <laughs> Tell me, uh, Sir Vardok, is this how is this how Mithril tends to always look? I've seen a few sets of mithril in my day, so I'd be certain. Yeah, I think it is enchanted. Don't know what with. No doubt about it. If it's all the way at the bottom of this tomb, it must have once long ago belonged to someone very, very important and heroic. No doubt about it. Strange, though. This tomb almost seems like uh, there's cultists in that snake corpse, if you will. Just kind of took it over. It doesn't seem like it was originally theirs. Why would there be human armor down here for a snake? It's very peculiar that they would seem to be guarding it. After all, the statue that the um the snake emerged from was placed right over this tomb. Maybe maybe it belonged to that whoever that rude fellow was that belonged like, interrupted us over our breakfast. Don't don't tempt fate. I'm rolling fate. <laughs> Roll a d100 for me. You see... No, no, you had your chance. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Your voice cuts off turns around. as he waves huh? his hand. Enough from you, my friend. Lewis starts banging his umbrella on, uh, on the ground to make noise. I was going to come and warn you of that thing, but... I mouth very obviously. You had your chance. And are you the guy you from- You were a dick, so get the fuck out. <laughs> he lost eyes of you. She's just gonna like sneak back around the pillar like, okay, I don't want to get in the way of that. Lewis, you find yourself floating in a sea of stars. <sighs> he looks at the rest of you. Don't worry, um, your friend is fine. Where did you send him, though? Lewis says to himself, like, he'll probably be able to hear uh, hear me. You know, bro, you're really not making a good impression. If you said you're gonna try and warn us, you really should, oh, I don't know, maybe respect us a little? You just dealt with here is one of only seven entities. Creatures what the fuck? from your world that have been taken When did you get in here? Okay, is Lewis talking wall. to you right now and you're trying to ignore him the best that you can? Where is Lewis? Yeah, he's a, he's in the Astral Sea right now. Don't worry, he's fine. But that- Oh yeah, thing. sure, dude. That's normal. What? what? Uh, enough about the seven creatures. I want to know where you put Lewis. Jed, like, wields his sword, just like... <laughs> we doing this? I really don't want to do this. He takes a little emblem from all from Earth's cloak. I'm trying. This... These ones are, abs are absolutely frustrating to deal with. <sighs> What's the emblem look like? Uh. It looks like an emblem of the Raven Queen. <laughs> <sighs> Kid, get yeah, down here! Kyle's just sitting on like the, the rungs of the ladder, just... Long story short, Archfey don't need to know my name, made a little mistake, lost a drinking bet, and now I have to do something for the Raven fucker. Hey, that's not very nice. The name's the Raven Queen, or the or Mother, etc., etc. Can I have your name? You may not, but you may know it. Eh, fair enough. Smart guy. My name is Endril. Definitely do not think that you should be sending people to other planes of existence, though. It is a matter of urgency. Your world is dying! I know. 
Faster than you think. Faster than the normal rate of decay. Hmm, There's sad, something right? draining this land of its energy. And focusing it all on a central point that I cannot detect for the life of me. Would you like some insight on that, Andrew? By all means. If I'm not too rude for asking. You're not. Just trying to make sure you're not a foe. Dad has it been moving weird these days. Do you know of the forest shrine to the east of here? I am aware of it, yes, and I'm also aware that it is currently holding, though for how long I cannot say. As far as I am aware, those are the points of interest. I can concur. Unfortunately, it seems that the one gate, the gate of the west, has already fallen. The hydras move again. He locks eyes with you, and you see a slight nod in his head. I was right to come talk to you, Walt. There are seven such crypts, each of them sitting on a well of power, connected to each of the gates. This one was about to fail. And luckily, you intervened in time. I see. Does the gate failing have something to do with how the hearts of the men of this territory, they seem to be, well, corrupted in some places, drained? That would be the work of the Hydras, draining people of their souls, converting them to dark energy, and using them to corrupt the gates slowly but surely. You all saw what happened after the Twisted Count had fallen, now the darkness welling within him all at once seemed to pull the force and consume him. Once his soul was removed, all that remained was the darkness made manifest, and those undead those things are the, are the least of your worries. Beware the soul starved. They were the ones who will consume this world if not stopped. Excuse me. Can I ask a question? He nods to you. Um, why are people trying to end the world? He walks over, puts a hand on your shoulder. My dear, they've already succeeded. I'm just preventing it from happening again. Because they blamed the gods for their own misfortunes. They've ended the world before. Yes. Some, looks over at the chest behind you, sought shelter. Not all of them survived. Leosin kind of shifts, looking back at the, um, the mithril that adorns kind of like the statue. What's the statue depicting? Just kind of like a person? It depicts a elven fellow, f fair features, very handsome. He is, he has a stern look to his face, chiseled jawline. So, are you meaning to suggest that even with these implements, this armor, Mithril, they still failed? Fortunately. Pray tell, good, good fellow, what, what was it that dealt the final blow? They found someone of significant power and twisted them to their way. With that, they tore open the final chains, ignoring the gates that we had already held, and the darkness spilled forth and overwhelmed the land. These nations, divided and focused on their own petty causes, stood no chance. They were all, one by one, overwhelmed and consumed, till naught but ash survived on this world's surface, and every soul was empty. I think I understand what you're saying. Everyone, my good fellows, fellow knights and vagabonds alike, we must return to the capital city at once. We need to bring this forewarning to the to the royalty of these lands. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know. All I know. Andrew, I must implore that you that you join us. If you're saying that that's that's the, the leaders of this nation becoming becoming corrupted, becoming twisted and and, and and vulgar with with this with this evil with this malice we must we must make moves to protect them can i make a move to protect someone else first Andrew looks at you can we please have lewis back to my understanding he uh, sighs and lewis <laughs> you uh land ass over tea kettle just with your just face down ass up on the ground and another thing <laughs> thank you Look, okay, okay. You could have just humbled yourself and apologized. If this is that fucking important, you could have just humbled yourself, apologized, 
I would have I would have shut up. I would have heard what you said. But no, you decided to take the sunken cost fallacy route, and now we're still having this conversation when you would have more time if you had just apologized. Okay? Lewis, we must implore you. We know we know that your heart burns bright with um why you were the first to die. I'm just okay. Andrew turns back to everyone else. You know, I was gonna. I'm not listening to a word this guy says until he apologizes. Hey, don't apologize. There we go. That's all I'm trying to say. He, he okay, won't. Then I'm not listening. He to literally him. won't. It's okay. No need to feel concerned, Lewis. We'll fill you in on everything later. Hey, Car I don't give a shit what he's saying. Hey, Karn, can I go up? Oh, yes, yes. I'm sorry about that. I'm glad I said it. Okay. Uh, oh, thank you, Lewis. Has <laughs> pines rest. He drops a knee. <laughs> I do not wish to be your enemy, and I apologize if I came off as rude before. Yada yada yada, mortal platitudes. I'm sorry. You know what? You know what? Thank you. A most excellent display, Andrew. <laughs> I accept your apology. Now I am needed elsewhere. Meet, if you wish to speak with me again, meet me where the borders meet. And he, uh, the door, the wall opens up and he disappears. So many borders in this land. Do you think that he was talking about the ones west from here? I think I know what he speaks of. <laughs> Lu Lewis goes over to Karn and Seraphin and says, All right, now that he was somewhat polite, uh, what did I miss? Oh, uh, <laughs> effectively, this world is on a path to destruction faster than it should be. Uh, okay, okay. The corrupt undead are a terrible thing created by something called a Hydra. We've been given a quest! Uh, and this has Got happened it. before. We've been given a holy quest by a, Got like, okay. a demigod! Oh, and yeah, he's uh, with uh, Raven Queen as well, apparently. Or like, mm, okay. something like that. I don't fully understand it all, I just remember that... Wait, guys, that, do you know what this means? Uh, that I should be happy that Lewis is okay, because I remember one of my well, teachers telling too, me that... But, uh, uh, we're like chosen heroes. Yes! Yo, guys, don't this is a really chosen. cool knife. Well, I mean, he chose you to go to a special plane of stars. That sounds pretty chosen to me. That. Wait, what? I what mean... did I miss? I zoned out for a bit. What? <laughs> <laughs> did you not hear any of that? What? <laughs> I mean, I didn't, but I had, I had a reason to not. Surferactic, <laughs> the world is ending. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Fair Lewis enough. kind of mumble, uh, kind of says to Karan and Seraphin, like, "See, since it was that important, I'm glad that he apologized. I have, I have a bit more. I have like a little bit more than just the baseline respect that I have for people now." Lewis, I think that you're getting far too insistent on this apology thing. It doesn't seem that important. It doesn't. To, well, see, and that—that's the point. That's why he should have just done it. But if the world's ending and he wants to tell us that, shouldn't he just tell us that? Why apologize? Well, he... Well, see, he could, but... But see, here's the thing. It took longer for him to get us that information because he didn't. Hmm. It should be a lesson you well You didn't really give him a man. chance, though. <laughs> I mean, he could have just, like, not done what he did to me. He could have, but... If he's I that powerful. He was, uh... Uh -huh. Anyway, the and, hey, water under the bridge. The point is, he did, and I'm happy with it. So we're good now. What was happy. his name again? Andrew. <laughs> Andrew. Okay, we're good now. Holds up a thumbs up. Okay. Do, do you, Lewis, I have another question for you. Yeah. Do you smile when you're happy? Your mouth hasn't moved at all. <laughs> Because I couldn't tell. I thought you were still mad. Oh, uh, I don't really... I mean, sometimes. Okay, I will keep that in mind. You have what my one of my fathers would call the resting dragonborn face? Mmm. They always that makes like sense. they're mad. <laughs> my, my good <laughs> youngness, I can assure you that from Lewis's display of such insistence that he receives an apology from the forebearer of bad news that... Uh, though his face may not seem it, he is absolutely invigorated by human spirit. <laughs> Alright, as much as this talk is wonderful, the world really is in danger. We should all go rest up and get the resistance 
down here to pick up the rest of this. Uh, it would do us well to make sure that none of these other chests are, are trapped and leave them for someone else to stumble upon and If no suffer. one wants it, I call this one. Oh, shoot. I gotta count the gold. Uh, I guess I could done. try and open it. I feel bad for doing <laughs> this. Karan, okay, this... if I open it, will you feel better? Not really, because these with artifacts are such left by dead. They need the rights done for them. And There's no God. rights on these. This was some old snake cultist hiding. What could be a better right than 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 implementing them towards a cause that they so heroically could not accomplish? Sir Vardok always said that the only right is the right made out of wrongdoing a wrongdoer. So we're doing the right thing. That doesn't sound like him. Yeah, it didn't. That's put getting that. right there. Anyway, I mean, I'm opening this chest. Oh, just open the chest, kid. With all due <laughs> respect, their wishes shall their wishes shall live on. They're us. Uh, Aster, you open this chest, your jaw drops. Bang. I you got see gout. two crossed sheaths. Eggers? Swords. In the other sheath, you find a sword identical to yours. Huh? Identical to it? It looks completely the same. He picks it up and looks at it, just like... Blinks. Turns it over. Blinks. That's, um, that's a good founding. Closes one eye and looks at the crack in the side that was definitely damaged and not like an actual like design choice. What? Esther, isn't your weapon meant to be one of a kind? Ah, uh, yeah, it is. What? <laughs> I don't understand. Um, I don't quite either. That's strange. Sir, Sir Pardock, my, my frostbite is one of a kind, right? You got it commissioned from Bondromi for your birthday. Yes, it's one of a kind. So unless the old man's taking inspiration... Uh, yeah, that's a little strange. There is an engraving on one of the sheaths. The name of Astorosa Caliban. That's not my name. They spelled it wrong. Maybe it's best we leave it here. Well, I mean, it, it looks like my sword. It's gotta be, like... I mean, it could just be two of a kind. She's gonna, like, pick up the, the duplicate sword. Does it feel any different to, like, hold? No. You also notice something carved into the bottom of the crate. Hmm. It simply says, In remembrance of the fallen. Mm. Cold sweat goes down her neck. Okay, you know what? On second thought, let's go back to the pipes rest. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, uh sober what, what, <laughs> what, what do we find over here, Rita? Good question. Well, looking in the headband thing, it's got it's got like a jewel, similar to a crown. Maybe it's like a piece of gold that goes over the middle of your head, and there's like a uh, there's a triangular purple gem hanging off the front of it. Server acting, looking sharp. 50-50 shout, this curses me if I put it on. Mm. You put it on? <laughs> put it on then, come on! Mm. I I don't know about that, he, he did... We taking shots tonight? I'll pay for yours if you put it on. Oh dear. Server acting, please, I implore you, think about what you're doing. <laughs> I put it on. <laughs> Practic, you feel your mind open wide, and you can suddenly think a lot clearer. Oh god, he's brain blasting. As your intelligence score shoots up to 19. <laughs> what? And if you're new intelligence, you know exactly what this is. This is a headband of intellect. I'm sorry, what was your intellect before that? 13. <laughs> My fucking Head, god. Headband of think oh, the good. Brain think the good think man. Good. <laughs> the Headband of intellect sword. is a fun item. <laughs> well, uh, Lysthane's going to return to the statue with the, with the mithril armor. He's going to search it, search the base of it all around, and he's going to look for any engravings. I think it calls you to take the armor, and as you do, you notice that underneath it is a necklace with a raven's head over an inverted hammer. Okay. And you notice an engraving in the chest in memory of Nightwatch Captain Garner Sorensen. And underneath <sighs> that it says, May Valhalla welcome you. Where um, where some of the stone has kind of cracked over time. And peering in, you do see what looks to be like 
some kind of bony material inside the statue. So that's why it was so lifelike. <laughs> I smashed the statue. Cyberactic! Don't! It's a piece of history! Uh, a few a few ribs do go loose, uh, stone scatters across the floor, obviously, and uh, the skeleton, still with some ligaments still attached, just kind of slumps out, move motionless. I can't bone you! What's gotten into you? Uh, yes, I don't know there's a skeleton <laughs> inside of it. No, you did not need to check for yourself. It, 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 it wasn't animated. I thought it was going to animate and attack us again. It's a rock and, and stone <laughs> and things like rock. that. It's a rock! It's a rock, Varek. You didn't make it. Look, better safe than sorry, okay? Leosain is currently in between Varactic, arms out, and the skeleton. Varactic's pulled his thing back. What? <laughs> Uh, Garon, if I may employ you for a moment to come say a prayer to this statue, I think we've done something awful. Yeah, I could say as much. If it had a skeleton in it, uh, smashing it could either put a curse on somebody or even possibly anger a spirit that was inside. Surely, as then, are you thinking that these people are the ones who tried to stop the world from ending last time and didn't succeed. I feel like from, well, from what we've been told, presuming it's all true, after all we know the Fae for their, for their tricks and pranks, then yes. Mm. You're still thinking about the sword you found. It feels like it's mine. And I don't like that. Maybe it's your mom's or something. Maybe it's the fact that this tomb is built on top of a gate that was nearly opened to spill chaos and hatred and corruption to this world of ours. It could just be an aberration of that said corruption, trying to fill your heart with doubt. Don't let it do that to you, Aster. Not my mom's. Aster, look at me. Uh, yes. Look into my look into my helmet. I am looking at your dark veil. By the wish of Carbonia, we will not fail. You will not fail. Carbonia's wish shall not fail. Okay. Yeah. With purpose and valor pumping through your heart, it shall be. It shall be. Thank you, Sir Leo Stein. Now I suggest that if... Nobody plans on breaking any more statues and disrespecting any more of the dead. I suggest we leave this place. Uh, all of you hear a faint rumbling that's steadily getting louder. louder. Uh, Jed, you know exactly what that sound is. That's the sound of crumbling stone. Zoinks, we gotta get out of here. As the ground begins to shift and rumble. Time yeah. to go! <laughs> yeah, as you guys run through the hall, uh, Trunks of Ceiling started to crumble in on itself. Part of it starting to give way and shift. is as if time itself has started to speed up. And you guys rapidly, faster than you might think, make your way to the outside. Mm. And with like, and you hear a crashing sound with a, with a plume of uh, dust and stone p particles <sighs> emerge behind you. <sighs> I think we're out of it. Is everyone all right? I'm fine. <coughs> a little bit choky, though. <coughs> <coughs> uh, do dungeons yeah, normally self-destruct? <laughs> I've heard it's pretty common. 